everyone and welcome to another episode of Radiant Central and I'm your host Natasha St. Michael and thank you so much for joining me. So recently I've had a few people ask me about food combining and people are always quite surprised when I say I don't follow the rules of food combining. In fact <laughs> the rules of food combining don't really work for me and I'll talk a little bit about it at the end of the video because um, I think some people are sometimes shocked hearing this but for me food combining some of the rules actually adversely affect my blood sugar, adversely affects my mood and also my energy levels, and also just my overall feeling of being satisfied with my food. And so I've never, it's, it's just never worked for me. And I'll talk more about it and explain more about it at the end of the video. But first I wanna sort of explain what food combining is for those that don't know what it is. And also to give examples where it can help people, okay? Because even though it doesn't work for me, I know many people that it does work for. And I know specific situations and specific diets that it can really help someone. And I also know that there's specific situations where it might not. So I'll go over that as well. So first, what is food combining? Food combining is, it's, it's a bunch of sort of rules or guidelines as to what foods to eat with what and what to avoid. And so one of the rules is to eat fruit on its own. That the view is, is that fruit should either be eaten on its own or it should be eaten in the beginning of a meal, never at the end of the meal or in the middle of the meal. And fruit should never be mixed with other vegetables or other proteins or fats or any other kind of food but it should always just be eating fruit as is and there's specific rules with melons that melons shouldn't be mixed with anything <laughs> always on their own with melons and that could be watermelon or rock melon or cantaloupe or honeydew melons like that another rule is not to mix starches and proteins uh, any kind of starch like a carbohydrate starch like potatoes or whole grains or rice or things like that shouldn't be mixed with a protein and a protein would be meats or eggs or fish things like that uh, another rule would be to allow a certain amount of time in between different foods so if someone's having let's say fruit they should wait a certain amount of time before they eat something else or if they're having starches or, or proteins they should wait maybe two hours or three hours until they have their next dish or their next meal so it's allowing enough space in between these different food groups to to digest things and that's pretty much some of the general guidelines with food combining and so in general I find that it really depends what someone's diet is like whether they would really benefit from doing food combining or they wouldn't. I find in general that if someone is on a very healthy diet and they've eliminated all processed food and especially foods that contain flour or refined flour, I find that they have less issues with digestive problems of combining different foods once they've eliminated all the refined and processed food. If someone has a diet that's full of like flours and they're like eating a lot of bread and pasta and things like that, a lot of chips or just processed food, then a lot of times if they're eating like a lot of proteins and fats and, and sugars and fruit and all this stuff on top of all that processed food, then yeah, it becomes like one big mess and then people have digestive issues. But I find if someone really does eliminate processed food majority of the time from their diet, they usually don't have as many digestive issues with combining certain foods. I find a lot of food, whole foods, work synergistically together. And a lot of times, there are certain foods that actually do better once you combine them. Things like having vegetables with fats, right? A lot of minerals are fat soluble. And in order really to absorb all the, the nutrition from the vegetables, always good to have it with a fat. And so I find in general that when people are on a whole food diet or a diet that is 90% healthy, real, whole foods, they don't always necessarily run into issues of combining certain foods. But let's say someone's eating like a lot of bread, a lot of pasta, and then they're having, let's say like pizza, right? And they're having bread with the cheese on top and, and the meat, you know, that, and they're having a large quantity of that. And then afterwards they're having a bunch of watermelon. Yeah, that combination is just terrible. I find refined starches, refined starches can interfere with digestion but I find whole grain starches or starches from a vegetable, I don't find that to be so much of an issue combining it with other things like vegetables or proteins, things like that. You know, like someone has 
fish and they have a little bit of rice on the side. I don't feel that's so much of an issue as opposed to having a big bowl of pasta and having cream sauce and cheese on top of it. And that to me is more of a digestive issue later on than it would be to have a little bit of animal protein with, with some sort of whole grain. I don't find that to be so much of an issue. So in general, that, that's how I see it, is that let's say someone is kind of on their journey and they're transitioning onto a healthier diet, but they're still including bread and pasta and processed food in their diet, then I would suggest, yeah, you know, separate the starches from the proteins and try not to mix in fruit into your meal. And until you're on a really healthy diet and you've eliminated all the processed food, then you can let later on you can see what it's like not having to be so strict with the food combining rules once you're on a really healthy diet because i found like when i was doing like a raw food diet or on a whole food diet as i am today i have no issue with that with digestion or anything but in the past i used to have serious problems especially when i was eating a lot of processed food and a lot of processed starches like a lot of bread a lot of pasta things like that i just found that interfered with my digestion and with everything. So I find the healthier that your diet is, the less you need to be thinking about things. Um, I also find too that in general, when it comes down to fruit, and let's say someone's on a healthy diet, I really don't feel that people need to always be eating fruit on its own or in the beginning of a meal. And for myself, I was saying earlier that I found that following food combining actually affects my, my energy levels and it affects my, my sugar levels pretty much. And I find that I actually do better eating fruit at the end of a meal, after I've had some sort of protein or fat in my meal. And then having some, uh, a bit of fruit, I find that works better for me than eating fruit on its own or eating fruit before a meal. Just because I know for myself with the history of having polycystic ovarian syndrome and being very sugar sensitive, that I do much better having a protein or a fat with my fruit. You know, or with anything that I'm having that's sort of high in carbohydrate, it balances out my blood sugar, it slows down the absorption of sugar in my bloodstream, and it's just overall I feel much better. So if I were to follow food combining, that would actually be uncomfortable for me to be eating fruit on its own or before meals. It, it just wouldn't work. And so, and it's not to say I have like a huge bowl of fruit at the end of my meal, no. And, and it's not to say I eat fruit at the end of every meal. But once in a while, let's say I have a, a nice big meal and I crave something sort of sweet and juicy and I want perhaps a, a small piece of fruit, maybe a half an apple or a few pieces of, of an orange. That to me is no problem having that at the end of the meal. I'm not getting gas or bloated or any kind of digestive issue. And as long as I'm not overdoing it, you know, as long as I'm, I, I find in general, if people don't overdo it and have huge portions of everything, they can do pretty okay. And so for me that works energy wise. I feel that I, I don't go through a high and then a low as I would if I were to eat a big bowl of fruit on its own or a big bowl of fruit before I ate a meal. Then I find that that would mess up my blood sugar. I also find too that I do better having a bit of whole grains with my meals that do include proteins. You know, like if I'm gonna have fish, I do well having a little bit of rice or having a little bit of quinoa or something in that meal. I find it just, it satisfies me more as opposed to just having uh, a big piece of protein and, and some vegetables. I find that I do need a little bit of starch and I find synergistically it works for me. And it's a physical thing, but I think it's also a psychological thing that I like to have starches with, with some of my meals. May, perhaps not all and not all the time, but it is something that I, I do I, I don't rule out. I don't rule out combining starches, especially whole grain starches, with having a protein. I myself don't eat anything with flour. I haven't for years, so I don't have that problem like I used to when I did eat a lot of flour and then I would combine that with a protein or a fat. Then I had some serious issues. But if I'm just having whole grains or if I'm having a potato and I'm, I'm having perhaps some sort of protein with that, I don't have so much of an issue. But again, I keep the portions low. I'm not eating a huge amount of starchy carbohydrates and then a huge portion of protein. Everything is, is in moderation and I, I find I don't have issues with that. And in fact, I find that it gives me more of just a longer flowing amount of energy as opposed to, again, a high and a low or, or feeling like something's missing. <laughs> so 
that's what, what works for me, and, and this is my view of food combining, and I find that, in general, people need to try things out themselves to see. And it's always important to listen to your body first, and you decide, you know, is this working for me or is it not? And not to follow something just because everyone else is or because so-and-so said this is the way to do it. All right, and I just want to remind everyone, too, that tomorrow, December 2nd is the next 10 day juice fasting program. If you want to do a pre holiday cleanse and do a 10 day juice fast to lose some weight and do a little detox and press the reset button on your appetite and get yourself onto eating healthy and glowing with brightness, then definitely join us for the next 10 day juice fast because this is a great program, especially, I've mentioned this before, especially before the holidays. If you feel good before the holidays, you're more likely to go through the holidays being on track and taking better care of yourself and being proud of yourself and, and just sticking on track and, and doing good. So if you want to join us, it's an online program. You can sign up from anywhere around the world. Once you sign up, you get the ebook that has all the guidelines for the fast. There's an online forum to connect with everyone doing the juice fast with you. I'm on the forum every day answering questions. And there's 10 videos going with the 10 days of the juice fast. Each video is about 20 to 40 minutes long and it walks you through everything you need to know about the juice fast and cleansing and detoxing and cravings and, and how to stay on the fast, how to have a successful one. And, and it also just goes through some of the issues too that people that kind of creep up if someone's doing a juice fast. So it's a very, it's an all-inclusive program, it, very well-rounded and it goes through pretty much everything. That by the end of the fast, you're definitely an expert in juice fasting and, and you'd be really proud of yourself too for completing it. So do join us. Go to my website at radiantcentral.com, click on products, and you'll see 10 day juice fasting program there. I'm wishing you a super fabulous day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.